Hey, and welcome back to Away We Go. My name is Kayla. And I'm Andrew. And this week we are giving you our complete wrap up, our all of our thoughts and opinions and experiences of our one month in Argentina on our trip around the world. So Argentina is country number three on our trip around the world and we were there for an entire month. It was longer than we expected originally when we planned the trip but we were super excited and we spent the entire time in Buenos Aires. So we were there for all of April, which in Argentina is technically going into the fall months. So it was a little cooler than some of our other areas that we've been in so far. Overall, Argentina was lovely. Yeah. And we had previously obviously been to Panama and Peru. So it was interesting to compare mm -hmm. certain parts of it, but also to understand what made it different and special. All right, so Andrew, let's get us started with some Monday stuff. So if you remember from our last two spots, Panama and Peru, we did our daily average spend which usually is things like accommodations food transportation all that jazz so the last two were about 148 and 145 each this one was significantly cheaper at 117 being there for 29 days made it a little bit easier because we stayed in one location if you haven't watched our previous vlogs about Argentina it's because of my passport that we had to stay put for a little bit, mm -hmm. but we were gonna be there anyway, so it ended up working out great. Yeah. Overall, again, accommodation made it easier. We stayed in one spot for the entire month, so that cost went down. Our food was a little bit higher than Peru, and I think we came to find out that it was a little bit pricier in certain areas. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the wine wasn't as expensive, but mm -hmm. some of the foods that we wanted to try out, that yeah. we wanted to have, were. We also did spend a little bit more on shopping, which, again, if you've watched the previous vlogs, you'll remember why. So uh, but also, in all fairness, uh, the cost for uh, passport. passport also played into that. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to make another interesting note. So we travel and often pay with uh, our American Express card. Mm -hmm. American Express actually has something that's been ongoing for about a year or so now, but you get a percentage refund on expenditures that you pay for in Argentina with the credit card. So we ended up saving I want to say at least a hundred dollars. Uh, I know it's not wow. a lot, but it adds up, right? Yeah. That's on average about what two, three dollars a day that we got back just simply by using the American Express on a lot of our expenditures. Mm -hmm. Also, one thing to note is that it was incredibly expensive to take out cash there. Yeah. I really do regret not going in with some cash already and just transferring it and doing the conversion and whatnot because using the bank machines basically cost us as much to use it as we were taking out. In terms of flight costs, it was very similar to that of Peru. Sadly, that is because we had previously bought a flight with Fly Bondi, is the name, because uh, we were supposed to go to Salta in the northern part for mm -hmm. two weeks. Uh, Fly Bondi is an Argentinian uh, small airline and they wouldn't let us uh, reimburse or anything of the sort. In fact, they had a method that you could sell your tickets on a kind of marketplace but you had to have an Argentinian bank account. So we were able to get credit, which we can use in a year, but we're probably not gonna come back in the year, sadly. Yeah. So uh, we had to take a $250 hit on that. And then to get to Buenos Aires from Peru, it was $970, which was a little bit more expensive than I think we had planned for. Yeah, we had forgotten to buy the luggage with the ticket from Peru to Argentina. So we ended up having to add that last minute. And I think that was a little bit more expensive than had we bought it at the time that we purchased the flights. Yeah. As for our activities, they were significantly lower than that of Peru. Obviously we didn't do Machu Picchu, <laughs> uh, so that played into it, but it was about the same we did in, in Panama for about the same amount of time. So in all, we spent about $416, give or take, on activities. Um, but let me rattle off a few of them, and I'm gonna go from lowest to highest. Okay. So costing us $0, was the ability to go to Teatro Colón, which was their theater, uh, because mm -hmm. our lovely Airbnb hosts, uh, their mother uh, performs in the Philharmonic, and they were doing a matinee kind of dress rehearsal um, for one of their shows. We got free tickets to go and see this beautiful theater 
for free. Yeah. For $15, we actually did this, I think, on like one of our first few days. We went to see the Recoleta Cemetery, which yeah. is where Eva Perón is buried. If you've watched our vlog, there's more on that. Uh, next up, it was actually our last day, which was $35 for the arcade. Oh, yeah. Um, we had our last day there. We just didn't really know what to do. So we went to the mall because we were looking for a few things. Ended up finding an indoor arcade in the mall mm -hmm. and bought got $35 worth of credits and spent a few Played hours games. playing games. Yeah. And it was a good time all around. It was fun. Uh, for $50, we went to go see Dune 2 <laughs> in theaters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was um, subtitled in Spanish, which was mm -hmm. really interesting. Which a movie like Dune, uh, maybe not the best one to see in a foreign country where the subtitles are in a different language because no. there are a lot of other languages spoken in Dune and so instead of being able to, being understand, able to understand the those, Fremen language we just had to try to read Spanish while trying to figure it out so it was a fun little language lesson but yeah, uh, yeah. so then we spent $76 to go to two escape rooms at Enter the Exit it was a place that Kayla ended up finding out we went to it we loved it they did a great yeah. job at building their games out, their rooms, and yeah. Yeah, they were literally just around the corner from us. I think it was like a three minute walk. It made it a super easy activity to do in the evening on thing, on yeah. nights where we didn't have anything planned already. From there, we spent $85 uh, going to Legally Blonde, uh, but in Spanish. Kayla and I were in Legally Blonde. I don't know if we even have a video of that. We anyway, we were in Legally Blonde as a community theater production. Uh, so it was super cool seeing a slightly smaller version or shorter version, yeah. but in Spanish. And then last but not least, it was $155 to go to a tango show. Included was uh, drinks, which ended up being about a bottle of wine. We got like one appetizer or dessert each, and then we got to watch the show. Super cool, um, just a little bit pricier. Yeah. Actually, I really liked the tango show that we went to. Yeah. I know that there are things that you can go to that are just big productions and this one was actually kind of a walk through the history of tango in Argentina going from the beginning all the way to the current day and what that uh, how that has evolved so it was really cool yeah so anyway that was our spending I would say overall it was uh, definitely a little bit less than our last two places and I think mm -hmm. part of that had to do with us kind of staying put for the most part yeah as far as where we stayed on our trip, we stayed in one location, and that was in the area of Recoleta, Palermo. It was kind of like on the, the cusp, cusp of, both, I guess. of both areas. But we stayed in Airbnb for a full month, and our host, Giovanna, was absolutely fabulous. Like we said earlier, she actually uh, managed to get us some tickets to the Teatro Colón. Mm -hmm. um, she was very, very helpful when we had any sort of questions. It was just a really nice space. So we had a smaller space than some of the other places that we've had, but like one room. it was one room. There was a kitchen table that Andrew did most of his work at and the things that I love. There was a working oven, which mm -hmm. we have not been able to use before. Um, as well as laundry on site. There was a pool and a gym, but we didn't end up using either of those. The gym wasn't great. The pool was nice, but it was- It was a little cold. Too cold. So. Yeah. And there was a deck area. Like, our, like we had a yeah, little we had bit- a little patio. A little which patio, was which was nice on those nicer days. And mm -hmm. also we had to air dry some clothes sometimes. So that was nice for, for that. Yeah. It, it. it worked out well. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much it for like the money side of things. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Go Andrew, you ready? It. I will try to answer them or ask you other questions. All right. Andrew, what was your favorite day? To be honest, being in the same place for four weeks, a lot of days start to blend together. <laughs> but I would say that one of the days that I really enjoyed was the day that we did, actually the Teatro Colón. It was just nice to kind of be able to be out and about um, early on, plus the show was fantastic. We actually did breakfast and lunch. So we had a, a coffee and mm -hmm. a muffin. I think you might have had something else. Yes. But afterwards, we ended up going over to Pizza Garin, which oh, is yes. one of the places that is on all of everybody's must-do in Argentina's list. And we had tried to go a few weeks earlier, or maybe a few days earlier, and we couldn't because of timing and money and all that jazz. Yeah. But it was so nice to be able to go there. Uh, we got to sit down, have some, uh, we had wine, we had mm -hmm. pizza, and uh, previously had seen the show. So I really enjoyed that day. There's a few other like highlights that come out, but I, I'll, I'll 
not steal your thunder, what would be your favorite day? I think my favorite day has to be the day that we went to see Lega Monterubia mm. uh, because we did a lot of exploring beforehand. Yes. We actually ended up, you forgot one of the activities that we did. We ended up going to a museum. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that. Yep, so we went there. Uh, we actually also checked out the San Telmo Market and the San Telmo Fair, which is actually more of a market. They basically closed down like four or five blocks of streets and there's just hundreds of vendors. And then we kind of were waiting until the show. So we had a, a couple glasses of wine on one of the busiest streets. Yes. Uh, and it kind of reminded me of like a Times Square type thing. Because in the um, kind of like the Broadway district, there was a bunch of other theaters. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of restaurants and things like that. So we went to a cafe, had some wine, and then we went and had some uh, empanadas. Oh, some really, of the best empanadas be the best that we've had, we had on the trip so that's far. So I have to say like the unsung hero of all of the food that I had was Rockford blue cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely delicious. They put it on this, these empanadas. I had it on my pizza at, at Pizza Garen. Yeah. Overall, really good. Then we went and saw Lega Manderubia which I absolutely love. Did we go for a drink after that? I don't remember. Um, after that, that, we that tried to go to Pizza get in, and, yeah. and we weren't able to get in. Uh, we stood in line and then realized they did cash only for the line. So there was, so, two, there was two lines, one that was, you can sit down and stay. There was another that was ordered to go. So we were like, well, just order to go. It's super busy, these lines. So when it was to go, it was debit or cash, which we didn't have enough cash in our debit card. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. And, but if we had stayed, uh, which we ended up doing the lap when we did the other show, they take credit card. So good to know for next time. Kayla, what was your favorite bar or brewery or mm. pub? Because we did go to quite a few of them. I have to say that the craft beer scene in Argentina is not as good as say the craft beer scene in Peru or mm -hmm. in Panama. That's fair. That's fair. And so as far as like pubs and stuff go, it was not a craft beer place like it normally would be. I think I would have to say my favorite was Tres Monos. So basically, Argentina is home to three of the 50 best bars in the world, mm -hmm. and we ended up going to all three of them. Yeah, Tres Monos, as Kayla mentioned, is number 11, mm -hmm. I think, on the list. So even going into the spot, you're kind of like, okay, this was kind of interesting, this is cool. Mm -hmm. But the drinks the drinks were alone really good. gave them that spot. Yeah, we like to do a thing where we pick each other's first drink. Yeah. So we look at the menu and we pick for each other. Um, I ended up getting Andrew something with peanuts in it. Mm -hmm. um, he ended up getting me a beer sake yeah, cocktail. Yeah, like, it was like a mix. But I just thought the, the drinks were really cool and inventive. The bartender was when really it, nice. The bartender was nice. We ended up getting a little bit to nibble on and we were able to walk there. So yeah. that was nice too. Really nice. Uh, what was your favorite bar or pub or eatery? Or I would say so... If I go with Eatery, I know it's an experience and it costs a little bit more, but The Hole mm -hmm. was really cool. So The Hole was like a themed restaurant that was, it had promoted itself as being a speakeasy, which may be fair, but it was like a prison kind of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So it was super interesting, super cool. Check out the vlog that, you know, that we talked yeah. about it. Well worth it. Um, but I would say as a reoccurring one was Figueroa. Yeah. Um, I did love it. It was... Uh, it, Figueroa. 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 <laughs> you know what that sounds like? The cross the street. Figueroa. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't a brewery, but they had, they had a bunch of craft beers. They had a bunch. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. They had a bunch of craft beers from other places. Yeah. They had like 16 of them, and I, to a point where I was keeping track which ones we had and hadn't tried. That's true. So it was super cool for Kayla and I to go. And on top of that, they had happy hour from I want to say five to seven or five to eight or something, something like, like that. that. Their beers were I think close to half price. Mm -hmm. Walking distance again. Yeah. Also, quick shout out because if you haven't realized it, we tend to do these reviews when we're in the next country. Mm -hmm. We have now been in. Uh, Chile. Chile. For, read our wine glasses, we've been in Chile but... for two weeks now, and the one thing, not one thing, a thing that I miss the most from Argentina is anytime you would go for drinks, they would give you peanuts. Everywhere we went, there would be like little bowl of peanuts. Sometimes they'd be like a barbecue peanut. Anyway, any Chile's not as big of a thing. Back home mm -hmm. in Canada, not a big thing kind of thing. Some places might have it. Mm -hmm. Argentina was like, you want to drink free peanuts? And I was like, this is heaven. Yeah. So Andrew, last question for you. 
what was your favorite food that you ate while Ooh, in Argentina? Great question, Kayla, because I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think Argentina so far has had my favorite food, like just overall statement. Mm -hmm. They had great ice cream, they had, uh, they had great alfajores, they had uh, chori, or chori, chori, pan? Chori, pan. chori pan, they had asado, they had their pizza, which was kind of unique. I would say my favorite type of food that we tried that was very unique or kind of maybe more specific was probably the alfajor. Oh. I think there was a lot of variation in it. So you had different places that use like white chocolate, some use pistachio, some use dark chocolate, some use, but they always had like a dulce de leche. I really loved, all, I think I shouted out to the Rockfort blue shoes oh, earlier. Yes. Everything with Rockfort. I loved I it. Will say, loved it. I will say just kind of uh, piggybacking off that real quick, just empanadas in general were lovely there. Yeah, and really, really, really liked the flaky empanadas as opposed to like the corn meal kind of um, Casings? It's gonna be a very specific comment, and many of you may not get it, but there is different types of casings, and if you use the cornmeal one, it's a lot heavier, it's a lot denser, and oftentimes it's cooked a lot greasier. Whereas if you use more of like a kind of flaky puff pastry-esque type mm -hmm. style, it's lighter, the contents inside are more apparent when you taste them, so much better. Yeah, so I that was that would probably be my favorite. Okay, Andrew, so what is your final score? for Argentina out of 10. Yeah. So we- I, I can't remember what the other ones I were, scored so. Panama six and I scored Peru, I think an eight or 8.5. I think I actually said eight or 8.5. Mm -hmm. I would happily give Argentina a straight eight. Um, I There's part of me that wants to give it more, but I also recognize that we only did Buenos Aires and it's not fair to assume everything. We also didn't do all of Buenos Aires to some extent. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that we didn't get to do even in a month that we were there. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed it. I think the way that I described it to Kayla earlier, uh, comparative to Peru, was Peru, the reason I gave it an 8 or an 8.5 is because I fell in love with Miraflores. I loved it. I loved different pockets of it, but there's some areas of Peru that I was either indifferent about or didn't really enjoy as much. Mm -hmm. Whereas like Buenos Aires, it was like consistently an 8. So the question I guess would be like, do you want a consistent 8 or do you want one that could be like an 8.5 or a 9? but it could right. also drop. Anyway, I would give it an eight. What about you? I would also give it an eight. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed Buenos Aires. Um, I guess we'll have to go back and we'll have to explore different parts of the country. There's so much to do there. The like it's a massive are great. country. The country, yeah, the country is really big. Um, we also were sticking to like a metropolitan area, but it would be nice to see how small towns are. Also how some of the hiking trails and stuff like that is, are, like going the Patagonia route and things like that mm -hmm. would be really cool. But overall, I would definitely go back and I would probably bring friends or family back with me. That's how much I liked it. Any last thoughts or tips or anything like that for the people at home? One of the things that I would love to go back for and do that we sadly didn't get to is go see a football match. It was something that I wanted to do when we got there, but to be honest with you, it was a little confusing. And that's probably because I didn't do enough research but there was a lot of confusing verbiage about how much it cost mm -hmm. versus that you had to be a member to buy tickets for a certain club. So I'm just not 100% sure how easy or accessible it was. It was also a lot Pretty more expensive, expensive on Ticketmaster. And then there's some people that would like sell experiences through like Airbnb, Airbnb that they'd be like, hey, you can pay and we'll take you to a match. But I'm like, you're charging half of what a ticket costs on Ticketmaster. How is this possible? Yeah. So. A lot of uncertainty. So if there's any Argentinians out there, anyone who knows Argentinian football and can help me understand how to get tickets, or if you can, again, we were close to uh, Bocas Juniors, which from what I understand, they are like one of the wildest fans in a good way, but one of the most mm -hmm. like avid fans. So maybe that was it. It was just harder to get tickets there. Maybe. Either way, I was just a little unclear, but I'd love to go back, to A, to visit other places, mm -hmm. but B, to be able to go to a football match. Yeah. I think uh, one of my last tips is if you are going to take the subway, something that you should know is that you do have to buy a card in order to use it. Mm -hmm. And once you use the card, you can put some money on it. And basically the easiest way to do that is to go up to one of the tellers, slip them some money, ask for una tarjeta. Slip them some money. <laughs> Just some present money. the money. You don't have to, you're not trying to slip it. Ask for a tarjeta and say you want to use Toto or all of the money that you're giving them to put on the card. Uh, easy as that. Yeah. And then it's just like a scan as you go, which is a little different from when we were in Panama because Panama we were able to just scan our credit cards. So this was 
forcing us to kind of pay attention to how much money was on the card whenever we were going. Yep. But it was a very easy system to figure out. And very accessible. And very accessible. Yep. Last thing, shout out to our favorite NPC mm. of the trip, which <laughs> is the man who sold us bread. They oh. had some really good sourdough bread in Buenos Aires. Thank you, Argentina. It was... Nice That's to great. be there. Stay tuned because you'll be seeing some more vlogs about our time in Chile, in Chile and eventually our review of Chile. Thanks for joining us. If you haven't already, don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe. If you have someone that is going to Argentina and you think that they could use some helpful facts or some about Buenos Aires. ideas about Buenos Aires before they head out, make sure to send them this video. Cheers. Cheers.